Welcome to the Deadly Addiction Channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. This show is actually a tie-in to the Godzilla King Kong universe. And I gotta say, uh, ultimately, I kind of, I enjoyed the show. Um, it's tie-in is not what super interested me. I was fascinated when I saw one of the promos for it. The um, back and forth time thing is not really done super well, but they have the actors, which just, it's probably the best representation I've seen of a past and future or past and present type character who's played by Wyatt and Kurt Russell. And it it is just done so well. They look so much alike. The age gap between them. Holy shit. It is something that caught my attention just from seeing one of the promo things as I stood away from the trailers. I wasn't even sure if it was really super going to be, uh, you know, tied into the movies. I don't know what you would call it. The, mo the monster universe or something. King Kong, Godzilla... It's all tied in in a story that is a little flimsy at first. And I thought to myself, I could see people in the first three episodes kind of not, you know, being totally on board. I was a little, um, my mind was racing here and there a couple, which is good. It keeps my mind going. And again, it is so amazing to see Kurt Russell and his son Wyatt playing the same character from different, you know, Time errors. Holy shit. Some great actors in this. Um, I don't know. Anna Saval, uh, Kiersey Clemens, Ken Wata Watabi. <laughs> There's just um, a little, you know, tie ins to the John Goodman character in the King Kong movies and the, you know, characters from Godzilla. You do see bits and pieces of monsters. Uh, you know, what, what are they? Uh, I hate saying, I don't know what the fuck word, Kai, kaiju, whatever. You know, these titans in, in the this universe, I guess they're called. And, it, you know, it doesn't need it. And that's a good sign. I'm not uh, pissed off that I've only seen glimpses of, you know, two monsters in one episode out of ten. It, it kind of is just giving some law and, uh, you know, the beginnings of this organization called Monarch and how they tie into the movies. They put a story that is a little flimsy, like I said. I was a little um, not on board, and that's the general feeling I give right up front to people. I think this is something you want to watch in, in, in the general sense. But the structure of how they, you know, for me it's hard. If you're going to do, like, flashbacks and flash forwards. You're going to get some people who just tune out here and there. Or I found myself like trying to, you know, tie lines and where things were going and, you know, where exactly we were. Once in a while, there's a character that just is a little weird to me. But overall, you know, I'm going to say everything was done right for acting the writing's pretty good, special effects. It feels like it's part of the movie universe. You don't feel like some of the things I watched with the Star Wars. Um, it was something I wanted to love a lot was like Obi-Wan. And some of the settings, and when they set things up, it feels like they're using a sound stage or certain cuts of the camera. This show did it well. So I'm going to give it like, it's got good... Um, Everything where nothing stands out is lacking too much. Like I said, maybe the first three episodes, you're a little unsure of where it's going. You're not sure if you like one character or the other. Some things almost get to the point of starting to become an annoyance or a detriment to the to the show. But I think it's a good blend. You got ten episodes. They, you know, flow pretty well. When you got a actor... Kurt Russell, who his son looks just like him, the way they talk, it it really helps me uh, keep going along with the show. So casting's got to be 
spot on. I mean, it's blow, it blew my mind a little bit. I was talking to my friend about it also. Like, I don't think I've ever seen it done better. But, you know, it's a, it's a TV show, so it's not just a movie where they do it once in a while. It's been done before, I'm sure, but I don't know. I just really was shocked, uh, surprised in a good way. Uh, you got Kurt, I'm a big fan of Kurt Russell. And again, this could be just a Godzilla is so, such a um, beloved franchise type character, whatever you want to call it, a Titan. And you can see it being sold on that and people maybe being a little, you know, off put by what is a standard? Is, is the standard going to be, you got to see... At least one Titan every two episodes. Did they get a couple of minutes here and there? I was a little bit uh, surprised at how well I was enjoying the story and where it was going. You tied in, uh, you know, John Goodman's character from the King Kong movie, and he's done well. The actor represents it. How it ties into the present, sort of, because again, if this show has any um, area lacking, is it comes with its own problems with going back and forth in time. So you're going in the first episode and you're catching up a year after Godzilla, his first movie, and tying into the Mutos, that they call it, and you're going into 1959. So you're going to get this dual type episode thing, and hmm, it really could throw you off because I'm not a big fan in general so it has to be done I'm not going to say well like my standards are the top but it's, it's got to be done enough where it feels like you're flowing and you're not your brain isn't going I was just on this I gotta watch this I gotta keep focusing on that because my brain will do that sometimes and then you know so you're getting first episode the second episode and you're trying to figure out Kate and the characters and where they fit in the trauma of watching monsters, titans, just devastate your city. Um, so one little thing here, like a little spoiler thing. It's got a lot of weight with um, the character who was, a, I guess, a school teacher who on the day of Godzilla was evacuating with the school buses. And she gets away with only... A handful of kids as the bus careens into the um, off the bridge or whatever. So it, it's got to tie in right to like the movie where you know the action's going on. The first Godzilla movie, if you're a fan. And when I say first Godzilla movie, I mean this universe that started, I don't know what year it was, uh, 2014 or whatever. And then they try to put in a little bit more of the characters. And for me, it wasn't the standout uh, element of the show. So, for instance, in that scenario where the teacher, Kate, is, you know, with the school bus, you find there's a little bit more in her fiancé or the, her potential wife or relationship, and it delves into what's even deeper in the relationship that they were cheating she was cheating, and she's supposed to be the special, nice, goody two she ones. Like that element just started bothering me a little bit because I don't think you need that in a show like this. It's a Godzilla movie. It's you know a TV show tied into the universe with King Kong. Now you've got a Hollow Earth aspect, which is how the Titans get around and why we didn't know about them, which is keying more into the King Kong aspect. You got a lot of elements moving around here. You got time shifts and going back in time, forward in time, how all that connects. And the relationship between the you know, the um the original team that started with Wyatt as um uh Lee Shaw, Colonel in the army, and now he starts you got a lot going on and you're tying it into the movie universe. I don't know if I really need to see why the you know her trauma from surviving this you know the Godzilla attack and having lots of the children die is really tied into the relationship she was in with the t other teacher 
at the time she was cheating on her, you know, I just think it's like one little thing too much, and it's okay to like try it here, because like I said, maybe one to three episodes, I'm not sure if I'm on board totally, but I gotta admit, by episode four and five, and I'm getting, you know, really invested in the characters, again, Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell just blow my mind in this, the way they did it, perfect actors to portray two different you know um errors there's a little bit of a twist too with kurt russell because someone says um to his character uh, about how old he is and how, how he looks and there's a little bit of a time distortion if you've ever been to hollow earth and you stayed here a certain amount of time i'm cool with that i thought it was pretty interesting and the the other thing that kind of surprised me that I wasn't sure if, if I like, I still don't know if I like it, and it's, okay, so, spoiler, whatever, when you factor in Hollow Earth, and I guess you want to call it more of a King Kong type thing, or his, his homeland, rather than Godzilla, there's a point in the show where Godzilla literally steps into Hollow Earth through a, a portal thing, uh, and it just didn't feel right until my brain started going, wow, what if this is like alien stuff? And I've said this on a couple of my, I don't know, a couple, I did the Godzilla reviews. I'm a huge fan. I've watched everything Godzilla, um, born in 71, so I go back to all the corny Godzillas, campy, just flat out bonkers stuff on some of the old shows. He's doing kung fu. He's talking. He's you know. It just gets. He puts his tail between his legs, blows his atomic breath, and flies through space. I mentioned this on a recent one. Uh, so you know, I'm ready for all the crazy things. And I was thinking, oh wow, you know, this might fit if it's the old tropes that Godzilla movies would make, which they wanted to go more kid. Friendly, and they were going back and forth between what the original was and what it stood for with Godzilla and, you know, atomic bomb being dropped, nuclear war, to, you know, him doing kung fu and crazy shit. So maybe, like, aliens have something to do with it, and I kind of chuckled because me and my friend were talking about the show, and, like, that would, like, maybe, you know, give the little kid in me that bonkers craziness that the um original movies had a little charm to it but it got a little overdone i mean godzilla is like the 38 the 38 godzilla movies it's now this tv show so monarch legacy of monsters i thought is a success for me uh, as an interested thing in tying in the worlds together how important will it be for the new godzilla kong the new empire i don't know but you see the tie-ins to the movies in certain ways that are a little confusing. So, I think there's a element to, to improve this in a leaps and bounds. Because I don't know if you need to really do the dual storylines anymore. Because it does go. I mean, you're talking about 10 episodes and every episode has some sort of different aspect to what time they're in. Um, like episode 9... Uh, 2015, 1962, 1982. And it's done pretty well, but you can see it getting a little out of hand here and there, or the cohesion of what they were trying to accomplish was a little damaged. But our overall experience, I, I enjoyed the show. Is it my love of Godzilla that kind of uh, biases me? Maybe. Because I could see a lot of... Um, notes that I took here and there that I'm thinking these are things that people might highlight and again I mentioned this once in a while but I tend to for the most part don't do much research in the way of what are other people thinking what are their reviews or their uh, you know, insights in the movie I just usually go on to a couple of pages you know IMDB or wiki you know see that it's um created by Chris Black Matt Fraction that type thing, and see if there's any casting, and, and include like a little story, and then after I do my review, I'll go out, and I'll look at someone's review, and I've talked about having people I like and don't like, just to get their ideas, 
because I'd like to get a bigger a bigger picture. The music was good in this too. I didn't mention that really, but um, I think it's got a good blend. It's but you're using Godzilla, the King Kong. You tied in your monster first, and they slipped it in pretty well because let's talk about the MCU super success. Even though everybody says, "Oh, it's gonna be destroyed," quality's low. Fine, it still makes decent movies for the most part. DC shared universe type things a disaster, you know, garbage except for a couple of exceptions. And they tried to put out the classic monsters, the Dracula, werewolf. It just didn't work, and the mummy that never took off. And I think. King Kong, Godzilla, Shared, Titan, um, you know, Monarch thing. It works for, in a general sense. Especially if you're not going to go super campy, but you're going to treat it like it's a real thing. Like the movies are real. You know, in 2015, I, I was on a school bus and helping the kids evacuate the city. And most of the kids in the school bus died from being plunged into the ocean. If the Godzilla fucking wants to chew on it for a bit. And so you do got some levity here and there mixed in with, you know, drama and tension. And are they using the movies well to promote that? And I think they do. So you're not going to get super in-depth fights and monster battles that are going to blow your mind but, uh, on a constant, consistent basis. But is it enough filtered in that it kept that part of me interested? Sure. It definitely did it well. Special effects. The music, like I said just now. It, it just got most things going for it that keep me interested. It keeps me wondering, like, how did that tie into this? And that's got to be, you know, something in their favor. When I look at this as something with people who are just trying to get into Godzilla, I could see it running away from you really quick. I, I don't see this being a good gateway or entrance to the, I don't know, what do you want to call it, the shared universe? And I don't think it lends well to that. Again, I could be wrong, but this relationship, chemistry, casting is just done so well. Again, it blows my mind how watching Kurt Russell and why, I'm big fans in general, but seeing it in a beloved franchise type thing it just works so well and again you didn't need to go super in-depth into some of the backgrounds but they're going all over the place there's a little bit of a a relationship thing with uh you know you're coming into this show and the main character sort of is realizing that her father is not the man she thought he was he's just not he's you know it's 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 got its moments, but you're building off two more relationships with the brother, and she oh, she finds out she has a brother-in-law or whatever the fuck you call it. Not brother-in-law. The father's not. He's been cheating, and he has two families. And again, if that's enough, and that's propelling me, you know, the the story with this character, search for her father, who he really was, what was he really doing? You get involved in Monarch. And you find out, you know, the legacy of your parents. I didn't really need to see some in-depth, oh, I'm cheating on you. And it just felt like a little bit of padding there, here and there. And this is just me trying to think of things that really didn't sit well with me. But it did nitpicks, I'm going to say, in the long run. Again, Kurt Russell, Wyatt Russell. There's just some excellent stuff done there, the way they do the time uh, splits it's just again it, it really makes me say hands down the best version of that I've seen ever but I could see it going you know someone points something out to me but holy shit it's something I'm keeping talking about it's that good how does this work in, in the future I could I am interested there's a part of me that is wondering how this ties in does it Get me excited about the new movie coming out? Actually, it does. Yeah. 
I think it's just called King Godzilla, King Kong, The New Empire. My thoughts are that it's going to be... It looks like a bigger King Kong type ape, gorilla, and he beats the shit out of both of them have to work together. And this... If I said that the show concentrated more on Godzilla and that aspect, yes, and it hints at King Kong. So, I don't know if they're going to go into the threads of how the King Kong aspect of this, because John Goodman's character was, you know, more involved in the, uh, Harada, what was it, Rada? I don't know the fucking names. Um... Just the scientists that are going on, they're getting funding and all that. Is it going to tie into more of the King Kong aspect is what it hints at. But is that going to come before or after the movie? I think it's going to be after. So, you know, Bill Randa, that's the John Goodman character who's played by uh, Andrews Holm. Again, great actors for the most part. Only got a little annoyed here and there by... You know, the elements they put them in, the scenarios that this didn't feel right. Like, you don't need this. It's a little too much. You're distracting from the overall uh, momentum and roller coaster ride of the show. Uh, again, I got to say, uh, I'm really excited or you know, interested in seeing another season. Wondering how it's one of those shows that blends the I want to watch it again aspect into the. Well, I mean, it's only one season, so I'm not going to get into the lost, you know, lost TV show and certain things. But it has an element of, you know, the drawing into the bigger universe. I just don't know if it's going to be someone who doesn't know anything about Godzilla. Is it going to bring them into the world and inform them? I'm going to say, I don't know, no. But if you have any knowledge of Godzilla and especially the new movies you can easily see this being a really good way of uh, giving us more giving, getting us immersed a little more background uh, I like the aspect of a monarch like entity organization how it could be Used for good and manipulated for evil, I guess you could say that way. In uh, Godzilla vs. Uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. The element of um, Godzilla Minus One on how good that story was in the movie. How it worked well. And I, I, I watched that with subtitles. Love it. Shin Godzilla, I'm not a super fan of. This is going to be something that, you know, could lend itself to tying in even those movies. I know it's maybe a stretch, but kudos for them to get my attention. And is it a ploy using, you know, um, Wyatt Earp? Uh, Wyatt Earp, holy shit. Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell. And because that got me and I was like, holy shit. Because <clears throat> you're watching anything they do. You just know it's... They look so much alike. Mannerisms, everything. Um, yeah, I'm interested. It's got me, you know, invested. The relationship between Kurt Russell, the original team, the uh, love aspect of that, I thought was enough. Uh, just a real good... Um, just a good uh, investment with the family and stuff. It just, oh, was it, uh, Mary Yamamoto? Great actress, great chemistry. Way to build up certain things in the area. And a couple of flaws here and there. I, even me now, trying to wrap this up in a sense. Um... I'm trying to really think, like, nothing really pissed me off. Maybe I rolled my eyes once or twice, but again, if you're in the three-episode range and it gets better and 
pays itself off better. Because, it, like I said, it could lose you in the beginning. You can get out of, you know, hand and go off the rails a little bit. And it's what it's trying to do. And that could be a challenge that it succeeded in. I'm interested. I follow the story pretty well, even though I'm, you know, I'm jumping back and forth. Having Wyatt or Wyatt fucking hurt my scene all the time now. I'm going to watch that movie. Kurt and Wyatt Russell just doing that. But they do a blend where his face is on like a screen. You're know, watching a uh, in the past type thing. And it's done so well. It's just so great. Uh, you know, sci-fi, its aspect, relationships, done pretty well. Some more better than others. Again, am I wrapping this up? Is it... A great entryway? I don't think so. Like, if you don't know nothing about anything, and you just watch this, it might get you interested in the movies, for sure. But I don't know if it does enough. You know what? Maybe they have a better blend than I'm, I'm thinking. I'm just so invested in Godzilla since I'm a kid, you know, a child, even now. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did, uh, a month ago, I did the Shin Godzilla, Godzilla Minus One. I did two and one because one made me watch the other. And I'm just a huge fan. King Kong, Godzilla, all the monster stuff. Even, I wish they would tie in Gamera. I don't know if they have the uh, rights to that, but that's one of my favorites. I love Gamera. And I'm interested to see where this goes and how it ties in. I did like the aspect of... John Goodman's character and Monarch being more of a presence in the King Kong movie than the elements they chose to use for Godzilla. But yeah, there is a old, they do the old war footage thing, you know, all the old atomic bomb testing stuff, that little flicker of the newsreel type thing. And it got me from the beginning when they did it in the movie. How are you going to keep this tied into the movies? I'm not sure, but I could see it being successful in that aspect, too. You got season one of uh, Le Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. The Godzilla King Kong New Empire comes out. Well, where that leaves off, maybe season two will pick up. I think it's a great idea to keep things flowing. Marvel with the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did it a little bit. Uh, they got away from it in the end. But there were guest stars from those movies on the on the Agents of Shield show. This could be it's it's a good show on its own. Uh, a better tie in to Godzilla and filling in the um, you know the the lore of the uh, Titan universe they've got going, and enough good relationship stuff that makes a couple of. The, Low quality, I don't know how to say it. Just things that just set up a little too much. They're not there enough that it's going to overwhelm you with negative aspects. I don't think so. So I recommend this to most people. I would be interested to see people who don't know anything about anything about Godzilla, King Kong, which is, you probably know about them, but I mean, not invested in the lore and watched all 38 fucking movies, all the King Kong stuff, or even invested in the new age of Godzilla. You know, Godzilla, then King of Monsters, the King Kong movie, King Kong vs. Godzilla, where you get more of the Hollow Earth stuff. And I'm not sure how that's going to blend in. There's a couple of things I'm not sure of. But again, watching the a actors work together, some of them are really fucking amazing. Um, it's just... Uh, a treat to see, especially in a franchise or something you love. And yeah, they're trying little elements and things that I'm not maybe agreeing with. But casting, acting, music, special effects, cinematography, you feel like you're in the movie universe and you don't get jarred out. As I said, I did with some of the Star Wars stuff. So I recommend Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. I'm blown away by the Kurt Russell, Wyatt Russell aspect of the you know portraying the same character from two, diff two different eras the chemistry between the characters some of the love stuff is actually done really well and a couple little things are just not where i would want them 
and the aspect of doing a dual show because that can get real annoying when you're watching something and it goes back to 1959 it's in 2015 and then 1954 then it's you know 2013 2015 and you keep now it's cemented because Wyatt looks so much like his father his mannerisms his voice that you you understand you're watching the same character and the twist at the end I saw coming me and my friend Bolt said oh we knew this was going to happen and it's a pleasant surprise again you just love some of the characters they are so good at what they do in the show that you're like what and I, I guess I'll, it's Mary Yamamoto um, if I would say anything as someone who I didn't know she steals the show it just um, she's great with every character how she immerses herself with the cast it's just great so I think this is worth watching, worth getting into. I'm curious about how it would bring people in. Ten episodes, pretty good length. Um, I talk about this on some of the other shows, how Star Wars, you know, they'll treat some of their shows like action uh, comic books that are only 35 minutes, some 40 minutes, and some they'll have an hour, and they'll do 12 episodes, where the 32-minute ones are eight episodes episodes this seems like a good blend it didn't overstay it's welcome it got me in i don't know if i want to give credit too much uh, this is a lot of shit to do with one of these type of shows or the producers you gotta give them credit i guess uh, the editors gotta have a hard job here too like i said you're going dual timelines how things started with this character they're gonna bring in kurt russell into the show and you know you're going back to wyatt how is he gonna fit in portrayals of the you know because you're progressing with the characters it's done well uh you're in endearing moments with characters some win you over eventually like the brother or she finds out she has a, a brother uh and it is irritating at first and i think it's meant to be and like i said i don't think there's any blaring shitty actors that ruin things I'm trying to find little things to pick out with the episodes. Uh, I don't know if there's a real um, issue. Some people might notice with directors on. You got so many. You got different directors here and there, but it seems like they did it in pairs, and I thought that was smart. Um, real quick, uh, Matt Shackman. He does two. Uh, ep the first two, then Julian Holmes. Then uh, does two, then Marzi Almas, two, um, Hiromi Kamada, another two, Andy Goddard, the last two. Is that a real formula for this? It works. It feels like it's, you know, the same type of people. The writing keeps consistent. Again, a couple of minor things that people might be blaring annoyances for people. I could see that. But again, the music, it works, it tying into the movies, it, it's got me on that level, interested, um, blown away by how to, they actually portray two different eras, or multiple eras. Having that job and tying that together could be a problem, I could see, for most shows, and I'm interested, I got a inkling of the movie that's coming out that I'm trying to stay away from the King Kong Godzilla New Empire and how this will tie into that I'm wondering if there's going to be something before or after could this be a seasonal thing that catches up to the movies Marvel was making so many movies that when Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was doing its tie-ins like when season two started you knew oh this is after the Thor the Dark World season three oh this m and they pieced it together with oh we're cleaning up the streets like little tie-ins to that and this this show is doing it well it's definitely tied into the mythos and the franchise of the Titans with Godzilla and King Kong being two of the most epic and you can debate who's your favorite Maybe we could say King Kong is first without King Kong there's no Godzilla um, but you can't deny Godzilla's um, longevity and quality of movies and just 
Oh, you know, we can get into this campiness again. But Monarch Legacy of Monsters, give it a shot. I'm blown away by the time things. A little bit of an annoyance here and there. A little nitpick. But in the end, as I said, the first three episodes, you get to the 10th episode. And I think it's a real satisfactory show. It'll work on a lot of levels for people. And my um, just questioning, is this a great entry point into the Titan universe? I'm going to say not really, but I'm curious to know if people did like, oh, you know what? My, my, my father doesn't know nothing. I was watching it. He got into it. And I think he's going to get into it for Kurt Russell. He's just so beloved as an actor. I don't know about his personal shit. But him and his son just knock it out of the park. Um, character interactions, the chemistry is just superb in some parts. Music, everything seems to flow well into this universe. And I'm curious to see where it goes, how it ties into the movies that are coming out, or movie. And there you go. So I hope everybody's doing well. And... Yeah, you know, I don't... I, so I should do more research. But when is that Kong Kong Godzilla movie coming out? Um... You know what? Let me do it quick. I don't fucking. Now you hear me make noise. My fucking editors and my team here behind the glass. <laughs> Godzilla Kong. The New Empire and Godzilla X. They're not doing like the verses. When they did their fight, March 29th, uh, February. So it is not too far away. How this will tie in and where they're going to put the second season if it gets one. Is there anything that says, because I didn't see, there's not a lot on this wiki, which is the one I have up now. Is it? Going to definitely have a second season. I haven't heard anything. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Well, anyway, I'll see. March, the King Kong movie comes out. King Kong Godzilla, New Empire. I'm interested in that. This ties it together pretty well. Again, hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.